Hey everybody, it's Susie and today I'm doing a mid-year review on our homeschool curriculum, which this year is Horizons Kindergarten uh, by Alpha and Omega. So first I want to go over what the package comes with. I came with, um, mine came with teacher's guides, which I highly recommend getting. So we have the math teacher's guide and this is all just one big one big guide. It's the only book that comes with the math. You have 160 lessons for both math and phonics and reading. All four phonics and reading teaching guides. So you have one, two, three, and four. Right now we're currently on three. Then you have, with the math books, we have two books um, that are student, student pages. This one obviously is empty because we're halfway through, um, but this is what they look like, the little um, student worksheets. We're only going to be doing, each one is just a front, a front and back lesson, which I really like because he learns a lot, but it's very short and sweet. So you have front and back, and that is lesson 88, then it goes on to 89. So I really like that. Phonics and reading student worksheets. I don't know where number one is, but obviously it's done anyways. We went through number two, and now we're on book three of phonics and reading. Then you have the phonics and reading readers. It's kind of optional to get these, but it's really great to have these with it because they reinforce what the student learned in his phonics and reading lesson which is really great. So for example, in the beginning he just learns the letter A, how to say the letter A, what kind of noises A makes, and they start off with short vowels. So this is Anne. Anne has a cat. The cat is fat. The cat ran and ran. Anne ran and ran. Anne and the cat ran. So it's real short. But then later on they get into for example, phonics and reading, we're in this one right now. You can see this is where the story starts, Loaf the Watchdog, here, and then it stops here. So you have one page front and back, and then a half a page, and then it asks questions. Where did Loaf live? What did Loaf do when he saw the little dog? Why did he run away? How did Mrs. Frank get him back? So you can see it really um, encourages them to pay attention to the story. And and they actually really enjoy answering the questions. My son loved, he loves getting the questions right. And yeah, he has a really fun time with the readers. What else the package came with? Uh, this actually came in the back of the phonics and reading teacher's guide. And it was a whole alphabet story, and you can see it says alphabet story. This was on a page, and then on a separate page it had alphabet story illustrations. And these were in there, and they were like black and white, but I <laughs> cut them all out of there because it was hard for me to tell a story and show the illustrations since they were all in the teacher's book. So what I did was I cut it out, and then I colored them in really nice, and then I laminated it front and back. And in the beginning, it really encourages you to read the alphabet story with them, because it goes over different words that have that uh, sound in it of oh, each letter. It also came with, it's called like a floor puzzle, but <laughs> I actually called and was like, I didn't get a floor puzzle, but they're like, yeah, it's, it's actually like this really big poster, which you wouldn't think is a floor puzzle, and it was, just had different like zigzags and curves on it, but what I ended up doing was cutting them out, uh, I didn't use it as like a floor puzzle because it's real, I mean it's poster material, and so what I did was actually just put them in these little extra photo album things and cut them out. So I just basically used them as a 
flashcards, I guess. Or what you could do is, say you cut them out and then you just put them like on a little um, yarn or thread or whatever and then hang it up in the classroom. That would be really nice too. So they, they always see like D is for doll, E is for elephant kind of thing. Um, yeah, it came with the floor puzzle, but it didn't really look like a floor puzzle, so I just did this. It also came with the wipe off writing tablet, and if you didn't already see my, um, I have all this in my unboxing for the Horizons curriculum, uh, so I'll link that down below as well. But it comes with the writing, writing, writing tablet, a wipe off one. So, we just started using this, we didn't use it at first. But now he's been doing um, a penmanship class that we're doing, so I do this with him. So now let's get into the pros and cons of Horizons Kindergarten. What I really loved was their spiral learning system. I really enjoy how it uh, starts off really easy, actually, like really easy. And then it challenges them like right off the bat. So it starts off easy and then it challenges them right off the bat. And at first I was thinking this is too hard for my son. But actually he really, really thrived with that learning system because it tells you in the teacher's guide not to expect them to be like perfect the first time they do it. So they actually come back to it later on, which is really nice and oh, effective with him at least. So far, what Russell has learned in the program or through the program has been, I had a huge list, but I misplaced it. Um, he is reading. Uh, at first, he, let me tell you, he actually started off not reading. He only knew letters, but not really all the letter sounds that they made. Um, he knew his shapes and colors and numbers 1 through 10, nothing more. Um, but now he actually, he started, started off reading like the three word, the three letter words, like with the short vowels. And I was really impressed then, but now he's actually reading sentences or even sometimes like short stories, depending on if he's learned certain consonant blends or double vowel sounds. So I was really impressed at how quickly he picked up on reading with this program. Um, with phonics and reading, he's learned how to write uh, properly. Almost, he's almost there. Sometimes he writes them backwards, but I think the more he learns, the more he writes backwards. But it's nothing too major. Where uh, that's why we added the little penmanship class that I did. Um, he's also learned how to spell. So say if you read him a short word and ask him to spell it, he can kind of write the proper um, letters that go with it. And if it's not, it's like really close, like instead of a C, he'll write a K or something, which is, I mean, really good uh, phonics wise. So he's also learned um, punctuation marks, so period, question, even quotation marks they've taught him, and he's actually picked up on that. And I thought, um, it was really advanced when we introduced pronouns, but he's picked up on pronouns, nouns, proper nouns. They talked about, I don't think they've gotten to verbs yet or adjectives, but definitely he knows the nouns, he knows the pronouns. And the way they went about it, if you, if you have a teacher's guide, is really, is really, really effective to have them learning. I'm sure he's learned a bunch more that I can't really think of at the top of my head. He's also learning the double vowel rule. So if A and I are next to each other, and I'll get into that in here. But I just wanted to talk about what he's learned so far. With math, he knows how to count 1 to 100. He can count by 10s to 100. He can count by fives, and he's learning right now how to count by twos, or also called skip counting. Um, even in odd numbers, he's learning. Can't really think of too many cons. Sometimes I found in the Horizons teacher's guide, um, it'll tell you to read certain words to your, um, your, your child. 
and have them circle it on their paper because they'll have three different like words in a word bank and he has to choose which one you read. And I just noticed the other day that I had, you know, um, circled which ones I'm going to read to him and when I read them to him, he was like, Mom, that's not on here, that word's not on here. And I looked at his paper and his paper actually had different words in his word bank so I had to read it off of there. It wasn't a big deal but it was kind of like a typo. And then also, at first, they told you where the alphabet story was located, and it was actually, they wrote it on the wrong page. I've noticed little things like that, just kind of typos in their teacher's guide, which is not a huge deal, um, but that is a con, I guess. A lot of people would say that the learning style is a con, that it's too difficult, but I don't, I don't know, it depends on your kid, I guess. I really enjoyed that it was like, don't expect them to be perfect. They told you ahead of time, so don't, don't expect them to be perfect. Just kind of guide them along. And what I really like is that you're there with them, you're guiding them along, and it even says like to help them read certain things. And I don't know, he's learned a lot, and I'm very, very impressed with the curriculum that we chose. So... I'll get into some of the, like, I don't know, overview, because I know when I was looking for a curriculum, I really wanted to see, like, what was in the book, like, what's the meat of the book, what is it teaching them, what will they be working with, so I was just going to show you some examples. This is the phonics and reading, I keep it in a binder um, when he's done. So, this is what it starts off with, something really simple, it tells you to read the alphabet, look at the letter A, and then you just basically tell them. This is a vowel. It makes certain sounds. It could be in the beginning or the middle of a word. And every time they introduce a new letter or consonant blend, it, it'll tell you it's used in the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, at the end. So that's really nice. Um, it actually has rules, which what I do is every time they introduce a new rule, I write it down in my like a teacher's book that I have so that way when they say uh, review or go over the whatever rule I'll have it right in my book and I know where to reference it so I don't need to be digging through his old lessons if now thinking about it it would be nice if they came with like a rule page that would be cool <laughs> maybe I'll just do my own um, so yeah, just basic, easy, what it looks like, you can have them trace it, different words that start with A, 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 kind of thing. And then circle the words that start with the short A sound. So it's ant, axe, annie, ant eater, apple. And then it goes over words that have A in it, the short A in it. So it was really nice. I really enjoyed that, the way they teach it. Moving on to another lesson. Okay, so say this. They'll have the short sound, short vowel sound, uh, ba, 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 and then, you know, you have them repeat it too. So with every letter they have learned so far, they added the short vowel sound. And these are the beginning lessons. Okay, so he really, really enjoyed the word banks, and he still does to this day. So basically, you read the sentence and figure out which word goes in the blank. So yeah, that's really fun. We have a good time doing that. This is where they uh, go over count consonant digraphs, which is like TH, CH, WH, SH, those sounds. It has a consonant digraph is two consonants that stay together to make their special sound. So, he picked up on these really quickly. It wasn't too hard. You can do extra little lessons to kind of reinforce it. And again, the book will tell you, you know, what little things to do. Or you can just be creative and make your own. It goes over the question words, who, what, when, where, why, who, and then you have to say, has the whip, or, you know, it says, underline the WH in the sentence, draw a line to the question sentence, it matches. Circle around the things that start with CH, and then you do this, this is really nice. It's where they actually pick the, uh, 
beginning and sounds of the word. So they'll have they'll have three different sounds underneath, and then he picks which one of those three sounds does the word start with. Um, he loves these as well. The you he reads the word and then lines it puts a line to the picture it matches. So he loves, he kind of just zooms right through those. This is some um, examples of just how many different activities they actually offer, which I really love about Horizons, is that the kids never bored. It's not the same thing every single day. They have different activities almost every single day. So whether it be teaching something new or reviewing, it's always different activities. So here's an example of an activity. It's a crossword puzzle, like the word search. So it just tells you across would be these two words, down would be these two words, and he had a lot of fun doing that. Um, one, one, word, um, one activity that pops up a lot is to have them read the made up words, and so it'll just basically have the sounds that they're going over, and just a funny word, and it's like kind of like no, low pressure for them to read because it's just a funny word funny made up word you know this is where they get into the silent e rule so words that have e's at the end then it's going to have a long vowel in it so i was really surprised that you know he picked up on words so quickly so then they go over examples of what has a long what words have long a's in it with the short e's game vase wave, cane, rake, cake, and they even have them right here. What they'll do is have them write the word, like say here's the word bank, they'll have them write the word and then um, show which one's a long sound and which one is silent. Down below they actually have them write a three letter word that has a short vowel sound in it then add an E to it and see that it makes a completely different word when the E is added. And I really like that. So there's an example of that. Okay, so here's an example of how he learns punctuation marks. Who, what, when, where, and those are all going to call for question marks. So who came to the lake, then he adds a question mark. What is the time, or what time is it? A question mark. Then, right underneath, it has him review what things have periods or what things end with a question mark. So, use a question mark or a period to finish the sentence. What did you do? Question. I went to get a drink. Period. So, here's a, another one he's learned is rhyming words. And so, what they'll do is have a word written and then he has to find the three words in the word bank that have the same ending sound as the word um, that's in bold here. Another really good example of different activities they use, you can see he did a word search in another one. This one is actually a crossword puzzle. It's by adding the vowels, the short vowel sounds. Review, this is a, like a review, which is really nice when they do a review, it's like just really laid back and they kind of just zoom through it when they do the review. So these are the consonant blends, it asks them to write which consonant blend that word begins with, blimp, bridge, brush, and these are the ones they probably just learned, and the other ones is like the BL, BR. Blend. One of the things that Horizons has taught that I don't know if I find it kind of um, hard to teach or if Russell is more frustrated with it. it. We don't get like too frustrated about it, but it hasn't really like sunk in too much with him is the alphabetical order. So basically what I'll do for this is I'll write it on a little word. We have like those little dry erase boards. And so I'll write like A, B, C, I'll write the alphabet and have them go through, okay, is A one of the words here? 
No, so he'll cross out A. Move on to B. Is B one of the words here? Yes, so we write that's the first word in the alphabetical order. So that's how we've done it, um, but I don't know. He gets it sometimes, other times it's a little bit more difficult for him. I thought, I mean, I don't even know when I actually did alphabetic order. I wasn't, I'm pretty sure it wasn't kindergarten, but still, um, it's good that they taught him. But I feel like that's kind of the ones we've had a little bit of trouble with was the alphabetic order. That's about it. Okay, this is where they introduced the pronouns. And I really liked how they did it. Um, a noun names a person, place, or thing. And then it says a pronoun can take the place of a noun. And then they had the little word bank. I, he, she, you, me, they, him, her. His, and what we did with this is we went to the board, I wrote all the pronouns, and we, we said them, like, we kind of, like, I don't know, not chanted them, but we, he repeated them with me. And then we talked about sentences where we would use names, so we would use his sister, um, Viviana is jumping. And so we'd write that on the board, and then we would say, like, what pronoun can replace that, and then she is jumping and he really really got it that way like dad is at work and then I said what's another way you could say that with a pronoun and I was surprised at how quickly he picked up on that so when I first saw that they were going to teach him pronouns I was like what pronouns already but to my surprise he kind of just flew right by that with Almost every single lesson they're going to have, the, or when they learn like new consonant blends or new sounds that are put together, they're going to have them practice printing it, one with the uppercase and one all lowercase, which I really love because it's kind of like incorporating penmanship right into their curriculum. It talks about... Um, quotation marks. When you use quotation marks, a comma is used to separate the direct words from the name of the speaker. And he caught on to that pretty well. We still need to review it sometimes, but I really, really enjoyed how they went about teaching it. This is just another um, activity where we're actually doing the sequencing of a story. What came first, what came last, kind of thing. And this is where he's at now. We're talking about double vowel rules, when two vowels are right next to each other. Um, the first one is long, it says its own name, and the second one is silent. So, And he's reading pretty well with that. And that's where we're at so far. I'm sorry if that dragged on. I just wanted to show people who were interested in the actual curriculum what it came with. Okay, so I'll review the math one a little quicker because they're just front and back, like I said, um, front and back. So it starts off with counting, I mean, just your basic 1 to 10, how many children are in the picture, they count it, and that's it. Talks about tally marks kind of just directional things, circle the star, the red stars, uh, simple bar graphs, dominoes, you're basically counting, pennies, what is a penny worth, a penny is worth one cent, and then he counts, this is what a penny looks like front and back, and one thing I definitely recommend buying would be the play money, uh, wherever you find it. I just recently bought the play money and we're midway through the year because I realized he really needed it. So definitely buy some play money if you could find any little, I mean, any any which one. We, we got the Melissa and Doug one, but, you know, you're really going to need the play money to kind of help them learn it. You can see that how it introduces earlier on and then it reviews. Um, the cents, pennies, so he's going to count up to seven pennies in this one. Talks about ordinal numbers, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 
and it also relates it to the days of the week. So he's learning the days of the week, the calendar, time, analog and digital. Again, the days of the week are down below. It goes over zero, even the number zero, so it, it puts it in illustration. This is what zero tops look like. This is what one top looks like. Each one, the way it teaches counting by ten, is say they'll count to ten in the earlier ones. They'll count to twenty in another one. They go over each one, each, oh my gosh, each number. So he'll write six, seven, eight, nine, ten, kind of thing. And then they go over 20. Talks about the days of the week, and you can see that the bar graph has gotten a little bigger, a little bit more uh, complex, but a lot of fun for them, coloring it in like that. Here's a domino uh, adding. Number line is one that they're going to go to a lot. Like That's a tool that they use a lot in this um, curriculum is the number line. Of course, the dominoes are adding. It goes over dimes, sorry, dimes. Here's a number line to use what comes in between. They use it a lot for what comes in between, what number comes after, what number comes before. And here is the first time they use it for adding. So you're going to go one right here plus three, so they're going to go one, two, three, and it equals four. At first I was kind of confused, but it's been a really good tool for my son. He's really gotten used to the number line. Here's the um, measurement through inches, analog and digital clocks, and counting, uh, or tens place and ones place. So. They use good demonstrations, and your teacher's guide really, really helps you um, to teach that in a better way. This is where we use the perimeter. So he's going to start at one spot, pick which one he wants, like which corner he wants to start with, so he does not come back to that. So three, and then we basically count three, four, five, six, seven. We'll count the bottom ones. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 inches. This is where they actually um, add the coins together. So 5 plus 1 equals 6. And it says, like, does this equal 6? Yes, it does. Does this equal a nickel? No, it doesn't. So that's pretty cool. And right now he's at calendar review, um, so it talks about how many months are in a year, how many days in a week. Uh, we knew the days of the week because we always sang like there were seven days in a week. But this is like, I would definitely recommend maybe finding your favorite song that talks about 12 months in a year. Um, we found a YouTube video about 12 months in a year and my son loves that, so we've stuck to that. And that helped him to know that there's 12 months in a year and what months there are. And right now we're at counting by twos. He knows how to count by tens, fives, and now they're talking about skip counting, counting by twos, and even and odd numbers. If you ask me if I would recommend the Horizons curriculum for kindergarten, I definitely definitely would. I love their spiral learning system. You know, some might look at that as a con, like say it's too difficult. But as you can see, there's there's a certain reason to the way they do it. And it's not just to like overwhelm a child. It's like teaching them and then not drilling it. They don't stay on it and drill it. And they basically come back to it at a later date. And I think that's what makes a kid like kind of click and say, Hey, I've seen this before, you know, like in their head they know that that is familiar and it kind of refreshes it for them. And it takes them back and say, I learned that, <laughs> you know, only mid-year, I can't imagine all he's going to learn in the complete year. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, I apologize. 
Um, I tried to talk about his favorite um, activities in there and everything. So if you like this video, thumbs it up. If you have any questions, comments, you know, just anything, write it down below. You can follow me on my Facebook page. It's facebook.com backslash super Susie homemaker, same as my channel name. And yeah, that's all that I have for today. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Bye.